CEPF contributed to the effective functioning of the Caucasus Biodiversity Council, which was established in 2004 with financial support from the MacArthur Foundation. This CBC is a regional body consisting of government representatives and NGO delegates from all countries of the Caucasus hotspot. This council also invites academics to participate in its meetings. Since its establishment, the council has proven invaluable to conservation in the region. It has promoted and monitored the implementation of an eco-region conservation plan as well as CEPF investment in the Caucasus. Just as important, however, it has facilitated regional programs and projects by providing a forum to exchange opinion and promote transboundary activities. The Caucasus is one of the most spectacular landscapes um, of Europe. In the Caucasus, biodiversity meets from Europe, Central Asia, Asia, but also cultures are meeting here, which gives a particularly rich environment. This environment is getting under increasing pressure from various sorts of development and to react against these pressures of the environment the countries of the regions with representatives from governments and NGOs agreed to establish a group which is developing a conservation plan for the entire region and promoting its implementation. This work started in 2004. We are having regular meetings. One of the important meetings is taking place right now in Tbilisi with the objective to review what has been achieved over the last years, to revise the plan and to make it more focused for the years to come. We have great challenges ahead of us, in particular in relation to transborder conservation, which is a very important task of the governments. And another important issue is to look at the impact of climate change, which has an increasing impact on the region, and to find and to rec recommend measures how we could best fight against these growing threats to this magnificent landscape. CEPF investment helped to establish the Regional Biodiversity Monitoring Network for the Caucasus Hotspot as a first step, an international conference on the perspectives of biodiversity monitoring in the Caucasus was held in Tbilisi, Georgia in December 2005. This conference was the first effort to invite government, NGO and academic communities from all Caucasus countries to initiate regional efforts for biodiversity monitoring. Based on the results of that conference, the Regional Biodiversity Monitoring Network was initiated and promoted. CEPF investment made a significant contribution to sustainable forestry. The range of activities included the development of a sustainable forestry training manual, the establishment and application of different models of sustainable forestry and natural resource use, training government officials in a sustainable forestry, biodiversity assessment and monitoring, and planting forestry plots. Two forestry demonstration plots, one of 10 and one of 4 hectares, were planted with tens of thousands of indigenous trees in Armenia. As the trees grow, they will be monitored and the data gathered will help to identify techniques that encourage high survival rates. It will also help to determine sustainable extraction rates. The project culminated in a sustainable forestry training manual with some organized trainings. In the Turkish part of the West Lesser Caucasus Corridor, an integrated river basin management plan for the Fertina Valley was developed. It covers an area of 80,000 hectares including Kakhar Mountains National Park. The plan was endorsed by the Fertina River Basin Management Council, which is also composed of local citizens and the local government. As a complement to the original plan, guidelines for sustainable tourism, water use, grazing and infrastructure development were created. The Natural Landscape Territory was created around the Tirala National Park in Georgia in the West Lesser Caucasus Corridor and proposed to be upgraded to buffer zone status. CEPF supported model projects for sustainable resource use within this area. Local communities were involved in the development of these models of sustainable resource use and they directly benefit from them. 
CEPF promoted alternative livelihoods and sustainable resource use approaches for local communities. Examples include the development of beekeeping, training in innovative techniques, and the creation of selective tribal bee families, as well as the publication of beekeeping methodologies. It also included rabbit, goat, sheep, goose, quail, and duck farming. And last of all, an ecotourism guide training for local community members near protected areas. CEPF supported the implementation of multilateral environmental agreements related to biodiversity. These include the Convention on Biological Diversity, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, or CITES, the Convention on Wetlands of International Importance, especially as Waterfowl Habitat, also known as the Ramsar Convention, and the Convention on Migratory Species. CEPF policy improvement activities included training for government officials, publications on guidelines and instructions, the review of relevant national legislation, and recommendations to improve the implementation of the multilateral environmental agreements. CEPF invested in raising public awareness about environmental protection and the value of biodiversity. The range of public awareness raising activities included documentaries, publications and articles, TV and radio broadcasts, press trips to key areas, conferences, meetings, festivals and other events on biodiversity value and conservation. Through CEPF, more than 200 journalists were trained in environmental and biodiversity conservation issues, in better communication and writing techniques, and reporting from the field. CEPF investment in the Caucasus hotspot was a unique and valuable opportunity for the region to strengthen and coordinate transboundary cooperation. CEPF greatly strengthened transboundary cooperation between Georgia and Turkey through a number of grants. These permitted bilateral meetings between representatives of government, NGOs, and academia, the creation of joint working groups and training courses, and it also permitted exchange programs. At the end of the CEPF investment, a regional press trip was organized mostly with the participation of national journalists and led by invited international consultant Dr. Mary Ellen Chatwin. During this press trip, the visits to four countries uh, it was a really amazing occasion to see the processes that the CEPF had begun over this five years. Uh, people were enthusiastic, uh, they had learned skills like advocacy, we could see places where attitudes had been turned around, perhaps through schools, through training, and uh, this is something difficult to do and I think that was one of the high points for me to see that this five-year program managed to change attitudes. People were actually taking care of the resources that they lived where they lived and they were finding ways to preserve the species and to preserve the resources and to uh, advocate to their governments, their local governments and to the national governments. We saw media training, we saw media uh, participants who had been trained and who had uh, advocated for changing and preserving. We had seen economic development projects. These are projects that uh, perhaps replace some of the the poor practices of overuse of natural resources and uh, some of the people who were living in the resources or in these, in these protected areas had come up with uh, sustainable ideas of their own, for example, for, for beekeeping and some very innovative ideas. Um, I think the strong point, in fact, was this partnership idea, the partnering with people. It meant that citizens were empowered, citizens felt that they were part of this process and that they could, um, they could create this process for the future and to protect nature uh, has become a cornerstone in their lives. The CEPF investment conservation impact in the Caucasus hotspot was finally reviewed, summarized and validated at the final regional assessment workshop convened on 28th to 29th September 2009 in Tbilisi, Georgia. The workshop was attended by over 60 participants including CEPF grantees, governmental officials and representatives of donor institutions which donated to CEPF.
deep gratitude and appreciation to the Critical Ecosystems Partnership Fund and all its partners for their invaluable support in financing, designing, and implementing this significant five-year program that has proven highly successful for the development of biodiversity conservation in the Caucasus. The CEPF investment in the Caucasus has illustrated how joint efforts and strengthened networks of civil society across this hotspot can achieve important conservation outcomes on the ground. The CEPF investment has significantly strengthened the foundations of capacity, knowledge and partnership in the region. Future conservation efforts can and should be built on these strong foundations. <laughs>